this incredible aircraft. Look down to the left, you can see it right now. It's got propellers that are huge and don't even look like they're in the right place. <laughs> but it's still probably the sexiest aircraft in the world. <laughs> That's the first time I have ever heard this aircraft having been referred to as sexy, but if that's what you want to say, that's okay for me. It's about ready to take off, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Marine Corps MV-22 Osprey. And today's flight in, we have uh, Captain Preston, call sign Lenny, Captain Frost, call sign Chicken Hawk, in the back. Chicken Hawk? Chicken Hawk. Oh, no. <laughs> you can only guess where that comes from. I don't want to know. <laughs> Uh, special thanks goes out to our maintainers. They uh, they work hard. As all pilots know, we're very good at breaking aircraft, and so uh, especially our squadron, they have some very diligent at fixing them, and we want to send a thanks and appreciation out to them for all they do. All right, we just saw a very unusual takeoff. Not quite a helicopter, not quite an airplane. Absolutely. We are taking off here. Uh, give us the opportunity to take off with heavier weight because we can take off and use the rotors uh, from the helicopter and the wings from an airplane to give us uh, a more lifting capability, which gives us more firepower in the zone when we take off. And you see they're transitioning out to airplane mode here. Now they are in complete airplane mode, which means that the aircraft is, uh, it acts just like an airplane, the characteristics of a turboprop, which means your right hand is uh, altitude and your left hand is airspeed. The funny thing is, when they come around, you'll see them transition back to a helicopter mode, and they have to switch their mindset. The right hand now is airspeed, and the left hand is altitude. So you can only imagine how goofy it looks when you first start flying this thing until you get it figured out. Well, now those rotors are some 30, what, 38 feet in diameter? 38 feet. So Huge. They, so they are really pulling this aircraft fast. How fast can this go? This aircraft will go 280 knots. Which is about twice as fast as a helicopter. Twice as fast as a helicopter. Yeah, helicopters look about 120 to 150 knots, really. Ladies and gentlemen, from your right, cameras on. This is the Marine Corps MV-22 Osprey. The Osprey first became operational with the Marine Corps. Absolutely, we about 2000 is when it came on. They've been working it since the 80s. 2000, it came on. They started doing uh, production flights, and then 2005 was really when it started to amp it up. We started putting the, uh, the Osprey overseas in Iraq. Now it's currently working in Afghanistan. The, the crew that's actually flying this just got back from Afghanistan in August, where they uh, they proved that the Osprey is very capable and I think uh, proved its future. All Osprey pilots, regardless of what service, be it Air Force or Marine Corps or any other air arm, all get their primary training right there at Marine Corps Air, air Station New River. That is correct. The uh, Air Force and the Marine Corps don't know what they currently have and all their initial training is done at New River. The Air Force then splits off, they go to Albuquerque and finish up some training, and then right before they go to their fleet squadron. Something I noticed yesterday for the first time was that because of torque and controllability issues, the rotors, or in this case the propellers, or what do they call them? What are they called? Prop rotors. Prop rotors turn to the outside, the opposite direction, just, just like the World War II P-38 yep. Lightning fighter aircraft that Lockheed built. That's just a viability issue that's built into that, and uh, one thing about our aircraft that's unique is that there's a connecting rod in the wing that connects both rotors. So uh, if you have that force of circumstance and you go single engine, that other engine is going to continue to spin that rotor for you. Now, Sean, the pilot has the right hand on the stick, left, on, left hand on the thrust lever, feet on the pedals. How on earth can it change? Because I see now the nacelles, yep. those whole nacelles are changing. How does he do that? Or she? How does she do that? <laughs> on, the, on the left uh, throttle, they have a little thumb wheel that you move back to bring the nacelles forward. You move it to, or to bring it back, you move it forward to bring the nacelles down so you got a lot of movement you got a lot going on and it's when you early training on if you move the left thumb the wrong way then the cells can go the way you don't want it to that means if you break your thumb your left thumb you can't fly an osprey and that, that is correct you're serious right. about that right. you don't have a lot of problems to fly those osprey if you break that left thumb it's not your choice this is kind of like standing on a beach ball and rubbing your hands and
he can hold it there, the computers, he doesn't, once he makes that input, he can basically bring the stick back to center and it's going to continue to move right. He has to have to move the stick back to the left in order to get it to stop, so the computers are going to continue that rate all the way. So it fakes something called positive dynamic stability. Absolutely. Wow. Now, in order to do that, how does he move back and forth? Because there are no control surfaces don't work. It has to have something to do with those prop yep, the rotors. The, the prop rotors are changing their pitch, which is allowing one to grab more air, one to grab less air, and move it to the other side to the, the way you're ranking prop for the board. At this altitude, probably the folks have a good idea. They might even be able to see the difference in the prop or the angle of the, of the prop rotors as they change to move to the left or right. Where he took off, that's a tricky spot because the controls are half airplane, half helicopter at that point. So um, airspeed is sometimes in the cell, sometimes throttle because he's right there in that middle, that middle portion. So having very, very little helicopter time and plenty of fixed wing time as a private pilot, uh, just trying to to make a helicopter do anything but be in cruise flight, not transitional flight. It's, it was very, very difficult for me, and yet the men and women who fly this for the United States Marine Corps have the great training that you guys give them at Marine Corps Air Station New River. Yeah, we are trained up very well from the uh, RAG. We put a lot of time. We have a lot of simulators in there. Uh, a lot of effort was put into making sure that we have adequate training to fly these things. Well, they're going to bring it in for a landing. I'm going to say thank you to you and thanks to the men and women of Marine Corps Air Station New River for sending this MV-22 Osprey to see us. Captain Sean Stanley.
Absolutely. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much for having us. Let us show up our We're pretty proud of it. So feel free to come by. We have a static one here. Come see us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice round of applause for the MV22 Osprey and Captain Sean Stanley. Once again, thanks, Sean. Get them within five feet of the ground, even though they have no forward vision. 